So I want to start with this. Um, <clears throat> so Aaron Rodgers talked retirement again yesterday. He said, I don't know if I'm going to play. My future's uncertain. So he told the Wisconsin State Journal that. Aaron Rodgers says, my future's uncertain. So Aaron's always been one of the um, headier quarterbacks. He's playing ch- chess, not checkers here, right? He's a pretty smart guy. You don't have to agree with his vaccine stance or what he says to, you know, Joe Rogan or whatever, but he's a, he's a thinking man, okay? So I just want you to think about that as I, as I go into this. So Favre and Aaron Rodgers are not the same person, uh, but they're becoming the same Green Bay quarterback. You've seen those commercials, those progressive insurance commercials where, you know, you start becoming your parents. They're actually very, very funny. Aaron's becoming far of whether he wants to be it or not. He's getting kind of rigid. He doesn't want to change certain things. Favre got very rigid. I don't want to learn a new offense. Aaron's like, I want Randall Cobb and my 70-year-old quarterback coach. They're becoming the same guy. And I've always called this the Green Bay Packer quarterback syndrome. It's the only franchise with no owner. So there's nobody to rein you in. You are the most powerful person in the organization. No, no matter how big Troy Aikman was, Jerry Jones was bigger. No matter how big Jimmy Johnson was, Jerry Jones was bigger. No matter how big Belichick or Brady are, Rob, Robert Kraft's bigger. In Green Bay, the quarterback runs the franchise. The second thing is, it's the smallest city in the country with a pro sports franchise. So you get kind of a fawning media. They're not going to ridicule you much. Everybody sees everybody at the grocery store. You could bump into Aaron. So you're not, you're not going to get that. It's a very unique, and, and the difference is Favre at least had Aaron Rodgers behind him pushing him. Aaron's got Jordan Love, and we don't know if Jordan Love can play. My guess is today he can play. He can start, but nobody really knows. So it gives Aaron even more power. So I do believe this weekend that if Aaron and the Packers lost and don't make the playoffs, or they get in and then get eliminated quickly, I do believe they will strongly consider getting a first-round pick or two for Aaron Rodgers and rolling the dice with Jordan Love. They moved up to get him. It looks like a total blown pick if you don't play him. And GMs like to play their picks, especially the first-round picks they moved up. And it does look like Jordan Love has gotten significantly better in the last year. That's what people say. That's what the film says. That's what we saw. So Aaron gets beat this weekend. You sit there and think, (laughs) what's the point? We can do that with Jordan Love. We're still the best-run organization in this division. Now, what's the point? Now, some of you say, oh, dead cap hit. It doesn't matter for a couple years. You would have a big dead cap hit. But you're not paying Jordan Love anything, and this is a very complete roster. They could probably use an edge rusher, one more receiver. Uh, they went heavy into the O-line last year. This, this roster doesn't have a lot of needs. It really doesn't. Maybe another edge rusher. Maybe another receiver. That's about it. It's a good roster. It's playing very well right now. I'll throw this at you. Aaron's smart. Aaron's calculated. His whole vaccine thing, he's calculated. And ask yourself this. He's going to be 39 years old, and he's expensive. If Aaron keeps mentioning, I don't know if I'm going to play. Hmm. The team that gets him doesn't have to give up many picks. What's Green, what's Green Bay going to Because Aaron's not going to go play for a crappy team. He'll just retire. Tennessee's the team I put out there. So Mike Vrabel goes, hey, it gives Mike Vrabel leverage. The guy talks retirement every 15 minutes. He's 39 years old. He's doing ayahuasca in the offseason. I'm not giving you three first-round picks. I'll give you a one and a two. I think, I think, especially off the Russell Wilson disaster deal, a first and a second, Aaron understands wherever he goes, he doesn't want to gut the team's draft capital, right? He wants to go to Tennessee. He wants them to have enough picks to get him another receiver. The Burks kid, Trey Burks, they like a lot, but they need another receiver. You don't want to have to give up multiple, couple of first, couple of second. That's what hurts Denver's job right now. Man, they got no picks next year. Is Aaron thinking, you know, I can talk privately with Mike Vrabel. I'm not saying Aaron's done this. But it would be really, really shrewd that you throw it out there. He's 39, he's super expensive, and he talks retirement. You're not going to have to give up nearly as much as you would if he was 36, say he's playing till he's 46 years old. 
If, if Aaron's three years younger and is like, I'm never retirement, I'm going to break Brady's record. You're going to have to give up four firsts and two seconds and a third. Aaron this week talked once again about his future. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Uh, just because you don't know what the future holds. But uh, when I think about that, it's nothing but gratitude. Not remorse or sadness. Just gratitude for the time that I've been here. The amazing memories that I've had on this field. Uh, been a lot of great moments. Um, but, you know, I'm still undecided. Uh, uh, we're all undecided about the future. And we're just going to enjoy uh, Sunday night and hopefully have some more to play for. Mm, very nebulous. Nobody knows what he's doing. Aaron Smart. Titans could give up less. You think Mike Vrabel thinks today he's going to win the AFC? Burrow, Allen, Mahomes, Herbert. <laughs> but Tannehill? Got to have a gunslinger. Got to have an all-timer. Aaron's going to be the one all-timer on the market, potentially. All right, let's shift gears to this. Uh, the toothless NCAA. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is under investigation. Uh, there was some recruiting thing during the COVID period. Blah, blah, blah. NCAA is bored. They'll make him sit out of practice. Who cares? Michigan's rolling. Um, you know, it's interesting about the Harbaugh situation. He can go college or pro. So both professions, college football coaches and NFL coaches, are having to deal with something that makes them uncomfortable. Let's start with college. Transfer portal, players can leave almost at any time once the season's over. you got to pay them now if they're stars. There's bidding wars. A lot of guys don't like that. Should be noted, the reason Brian Kelly at LSU and Lincoln Riley at USC can get to 10 and 11 wins respectively in one year, transfer portal. Go solve your weaknesses. So it's a good thing for the smart coaches who can recruit. It's a great thing for Brian Kelly. It's a great thing for Lincoln Riley. The old school whiners, eh, get over yourself. You can get, it's like, you know, you get more recruits, except guys are actually playing in college football, so you have fewer whiffs, fewer busts. So some coaches are uncomfortable with that. Maybe Harbaugh is, I doubt it. NFL coaches, because of the global wealth we have seen explode with tech over the last 10, 15 years, owners are now all billionaires, all rich, and they consider $40 million a rounding error. You got to win, you got to win fast. I saw a story yesterday, Mike McDaniel. Miami Dolphins coach could get fired. Fired? I thought he was a success. That's insane. But billionaires are insane because they've never been richer. So I am rooting for Harbaugh to stay in college because I do believe, having grown up in Seattle or near Seattle, that northern programs, Oregon, Washington, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Penn State, need great coaches to compete for a national title or compete for a playoff. In the South, you could hire the wrong coach. There's so many dynamic, robust high school football stars and programs. Ed Orgeron's considered a miss, and he won a national title. You could never do that in a Northern program. There's not as many kids up there. You're constantly convincing kids to come up North and play in lousy weather. So Harbaugh matters to Michigan. When he got there, Michael Jordan's brand basically signed Michigan football to a huge deal. Why? Because he's Jim Harbaugh. He's great for Michigan. Michigan's great for Jim. The other thing is, and I believe this to be true, I think about stuff like this all the time. Um, Stay in a job that allows you to be the best version of yourself. So you have to have some self-examination. What are your weaknesses as a human being? You're driving around listening to me. What are you really good at and what are you not good at? If you make most of your life decisions, I live by this. I think about it all the time. Doing things that are the best version of me. I have things I don't do well, things I do pretty well. I think Harbaugh's actually better for college. Why? Because he gets the Michigan brand. He can dominate the Big Ten mostly. He can clearly recruit. He gets to control the personnel. He doesn't have a a power-hungry general manager or a petulant quarterback making $50 million a year. He didn't have a salary cap to deal with or a zany billionaire owner who gets in a bad mood because they had a, uh, you know, one of his companies goes belly up and now he wants to tell Harbaugh how to run his team. Stay in jobs, seek jobs, maintain jobs that are the best version of you. And I think Harbaugh, no crazy billionaire owner, 
No power-hungry GM. He can control virtually every part of the program. And he's a smart guy that makes lots of good decisions. He can change in a dime coordinators. He can change in a dime philosophy. He doesn't have to get it okay with a GM. He doesn't have to get it okayed with the owner. He doesn't have to talk to the business ops guy. I want to change my coordinator. I want to change how we play. He can do it at the college level. I hope he stays. The NCAA thing doesn't mean squat. We'll keep you posted.